So now I'd like to open the floor to questions from the audience. Uh, yes, this one here. Um, uh, another economist question. Uh, <laughs> they're all very nasty. Um, uh, I understand that it takes a long time to see uh, outcomes, but uh, do you have even uh, an anecdotal uh, sense of whether a lot of uh, people who have title or communities who have received title have been able to get credit from banks for investments or land improvements and so on? Yeah, should I have a question? Um, would you or like to? Or, or um, actually, there was another question uh, also. And there's another one. So um, perhaps we can go here. Hi, I'm, I'm just curious if, uh, 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 particularly in the Mozambique case, uh, have you observed any uh, correlation at all between uh, property rights and uh, uh, control of uh, wildlife crime uh, 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 poaching. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, John Waugh from Integra. Um, yeah, question on the case in Tanzania. So uh, I'm Daniel. Uh, we're, we're a company called Ben Ben. We're working in Ghana with a few of the banks to help uh, access uh, lending uh, to those doing land documentation. So I was curious to see that you said one of the challenges was that many banks do not lend. Um, who is currently doing the lending that you were talking about? Are these rural banks who are already lending on these uh, temporary titles or the occupancy certificates? And then what is the challenge for the other banks of why they're not lending? Um, okay, so maybe we'll let the speakers answer those questions. Um, the first was the, uh, about lending the outcomes, and, and then um, it's related to the lending, and then the other one was about property rights and poaching. Mm -hmm. Wait, should I start? Go ahead. Well, thank you. Uh, in Mozambique, uh, land, is not, uh, land belongs to the state, so it's impossible to use it as, a, as collateral. It's, that would be the straight, the straight answer to, to that. There is a question of, there is a lot of discussion on privatization. There is uh, an attempt to do an amendment in the law that will allow uh, transfer, transference of, uh, of rights, but uh, it's, you cannot use it as a class collateral. With regards to uh, poaching <coughs> and, and the crime, uh, the consciousness of communities uh, has demonstrated that uh, in some uh, cases they have control. They do, they do police and, and protect their uh, resources. Uh, in a recent visit to Cabo Delgado, for instance, there was a group of uh, people who were arrested by the community first uh, because they, they monitor uh, the use uh, the illegal use of their uh, resources. So consciousness uh, is key uh, uh, in these uh, uh, situations. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, maybe also to go back to the, the economist uh, point. Um, for Tanzania, the ultimate goal of establishing this particular program is really capital formation, that we, we do all things, but at the end of the day, we want these people to participate in the economy which is governed by the rule of the law. Now, um, that's why we undertake parceling, giving them titles on individual basis so that they can use them to get, uh, to get loan. But uh, I can uh, join this with the question asked by my, my brother there, that, uh, but there are some, some banks which do not accept this um, from the experience. And I agree, there are some banks which do not accept the, the CCRO because they said it's customer right. It's not a right, it's customer right. But uh, the challenge is, why some, some banks are not accepting these uh, CCROs is the, what contains in the law. Because in the law, they said in case of default, in case of default, bankers are not allowed to sell the properties which someone has used it as a collateral. Yes, it's conf conflicting. 
that you accepted that you want people to make uh, uh, capital out of it. And if someone defaults, you cannot sell his property. So bankers were refraining. They said, no, they, it does not, not make any sense. But you, since Mkurabita has uh, started this uh, particular uh, program, they kept on informing the bankers that we need to, be, to sit down together and see how, what can we do so that the, these citizens can take advantage of building the economy. At the same time, they are not defaulting. And in some cases, we go and uh, make a, a triple tight arrangement. We say, here is the bank, the financial institution, here is Mkurabita, here is the, someone who wants to, to, to get a loan from the bank. So that Mkurabita becomes like a, you know, a father or a mother to this person, they're pushing. No, how much have you paid so far? How much have you done so far? Did you use the, the loan according to the requirement? So we, we have proved that this has uh, made the bankers now say, OK, we are confident that the people who are receiving CCRO, they can pay back the loans. And uh, in fact, these banks, not only the community banks, because we have the community banks, we have other big banks. We have CRDB Bank. It's a very big bank. We have National Microfinance Bank. It's a very big bank. And now we have established a cultural a development bank, so that it, yeah, it goes straight to the farmers giving these uh, particular loans. But yet there are still some people, some banks, which do not accept it because of this point in the law. OK. Other questions? Um, I think David, uh, David Mason had a question, and then Susanna. Um, thanks. Yeah. Um, Two questions, really. In, in Tanzania, um, are there chiefs? And if so, how do they, how are they involved in land administration and how, they, how have they been incorporated in this um, titling process? And secondly, in, again, in, again in Tanzania, are there communal areas where there may be overlapping rights? Um, and if so, um, how have you dealt with that in this titling process? If it's communal areas, it's communal piece of land, uh, maybe at a certain part of the year, one group might be using that mm -hmm. land. In another part of the year, another group might be using that land. How does that get incorporated into the entitling process? Okay. Um, Susanna? Uh, um, yes, I have a question <coughs> about, um, I guess, transparency and uh, avoiding elite capture during these processes at the village level, at the local level. Um, for example, the, is it the village adjudication committees in Tanzania, is that what they're called? Mm -hmm. the, um, yes. How are those committees selected? Is uh, what attempts are made to make sure that all sectors of the village, like minorities and women are, um, represented in those committees mm -hmm. uh, to avoid that type of uh, elite capture or uh, land grabbing, uh, whatever you want to call it. Okay. And can, can we take one more question from the gentleman over here? Thank you. Thank you both for the presentation. I'm Paul Masick with the World Cocoa Foundation. And I was wondering if you could answer two questions. One is a very practical question. Regarding the costs of registering land and documenting it, how were those costs shared? And to what extent did the farmers actively participate in that cost sharing? And, and perhaps at what level? Happy to be referred to more detailed documentation if that's too granular for this discussion. And then secondly, I'd also be interested in knowing to what extent you have evidence that farmers who've actually registered their land are changing their practices and behaviors with regard to that land. Are they actually changing anything, or is it just um, you know, taking what was a traditional customary right and now translating it into sort of more codified registered right? Uh, mm -hmm. Okay, uh, starting from the last, um, if there are changes after titling, um, in the perspective of uh, our program, uh, our uh, project, we work with communities, so it's collective uh, rights, and even when it is titling, uh, 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 it is uh, 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 for associations. I, what I can uh, share uh, from 
most positive uh, experiences is that the title uh, for an association or a cooperative is very, very important to get uh, support, uh, either technical or financial. So um, um, the, the best example I have is a community, an association that uh, we helped to register 58 hectares by uh, a river, but they had no means to invest. Uh, a, a, pro a government program dedicated, actually funded by the World Bank, dedicated to uh, support irrigation, provided them with the equipment to irrigate their land. Uh, a program, another program uh, that promotes commercial agriculture, provided that technical uh, assistance to produce uh, sugarcane. The harmonization of these three, uh, uh, the title, the water and uh, the sugarcane, uh, technique, uh, uh, upgraded their capacity, uh, and uh, uh, the sugar company nearby just buys their product, so the chain is closed. Um, this is one of the most positive examples. Uh, yeah, uh, I can also add something on this uh, last point you, you, you talked about, um, whether registration assists in changing behavior. Yeah, we can say yes. And in fact, in terms of Tanzania, it has changed people's mindset so much because they linked the entire process with getting money, with the capital formation. So since everyone is saying, okay, I'm registering my land because I get um, collateral to get uh, loan. And if I get loan, I will do so and so businesses. So from there, people started to think about capital formation, capital formation all the time. So it has really changed their mindset so much, not only registration. Um, with regards to the cost sharing, um, uh, you ask, you, someone asked me how, if uh, there is cost sharing or how, how do they share this cost. I can say that uh, in areas where Mkurabita uh, undertake this uh, capacity building, so the government uh, is like investing at the beginning, is giving capital, is giving a seed for the formulation to, to start taking place. And thereafter, um, they will, uh, um, thereafter, they, I mean, the village councils decide how much someone has to contribute. Because this money is supposed to be uh, uh, assisting um, the land register at the village level. So it is the village council decide how much these people have to, 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 to contribute. But if you are, you are doing the, the formalization using uh, private firms, then that is another thing because they come up with the um, business-oriented uh, decisions. And um, another, another point was whether we have chiefdom in the country. We don't have. Everything which is, is related to land issues, they are not about chiefs, it's about the, the, the law. So it's land, uh, village land uh, uh, number five of 1999 is governing all transaction regarding land formalization in the country. Uh, with the representation, um, yeah, at the village level, the first register is the village uh, chairman, a village executive officer. So the representation is again, is again according to the law, because the law says that education officer should be this and this, uh, the committee should involve this, we have four women in the committee of ten. So all these things are being done according to the law. Yeah. Uh, no, no. Okay. Um, Okay, so uh, I'm now getting the sign to stop, so um, we're going to wrap up this session for now. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Emilio Thank you. and Sarah here.